Hey, in this video, we're gonna discuss something that doesn't get a lot of attention, nowhere near as much as it should, which is to redefine what success actually means in the coaching industry and how to succeed as a powerful part-time coach. Well, welcome everyone to a really, really important discussion Yeah, that we're actually kind of angry about. <laughs> like, <laughs> We've got a lot of energy around this and it's, it's a really timely discussion as well meaning, you know, where we are in the world and what's happening in society and all of that sort of stuff, right? So we're going to get into the value of and uh, hopefully the normalization of being a part-time coach. Yeah. One of the things, this has to be related to the fact that there's no regulation in the coaching industry. Mm. Because one of the things that is a problem, hmm. I'm going to try to choose my words carefully, but also be blunt and real. Um, one, of the, one of the problems in the coaching industry is that a lot of the fantasies have become expectations. Hmm. So the fantasies of just go all in and be committed and do whatever it is that we're telling you to do, and then you could make... $75,000 in your first few months, or you can make, you could have $10,000 weekends. And, and I remember that I was drawn into a lot of that early on. Mm -hmm. And I also remember the first time that I made a lot of, a, a lot of money. Uh, it, it was, it was at an event. And I think I, I think I made like $12,000 in a single event in, you know, a weekend. I mean, that's crazy money. Yeah. For, for who I was at the time. And, and, you know, I was a school teacher, probation officer. I mean, that was like a third of my year, right. In a weekend. But I remember being really deflated at the same time mm -hmm. because I was focused on the money coming in the $12,000 and what nobody was talking about, or I wasn't paying attention to if they were, is all the money that goes into that. And the money that went out from it, you know, all the expenses and the, the, the behind the scenes business stuff, right? So out of that $12,000, I don't remember right now how much actually made it into my company, uh, but not much actually. And part of that was because the, the previous three months, there was no money coming in and all the money was going out, right? right. And so I remember just thinking, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Hmm. And... Now I jumped in full time, but part but part of the reason was I was already floundering around full time. So I had already quit my job a couple of years before I got into coaching. So I was trying to do sales and and you know, direct sales companies and all that kind of stuff. So so I wasn't I didn't like leave a, a job for coaching. I left a job to try to you know find my entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Um, so that's a little bit different. Whereas I know you did this part-time and we're going to talk, uh, I, I want to hear more of your story here in a little bit. So the, the point that I'm making is there's a lot of, there's a lot of magnets out there that are just simply not true. Mm. But one of the things that I think the marketing in the, it, cause, cause we want sexy, right? We don't want to hear that we're actually going to have to go through medical school and we're going to have to pass a bar exam and we're going to have to spend years in getting our certification and we're going to have to do all that stuff. In today's world, especially in an unregulated industry, just give me all of that stuff, but here, now. Like all that stuff that, that takes years in the oven, give it to me in days out of the microwave. And, and then I'm in, right? And so we have that, that uh, desire as humans and it's being offered to us. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the, the downsides of that, one of the huge downsides of that is that we expect really fast success. And because we expect really fast success, we think that if we go full time, then that's how to make it work, right? Like if I just had more time to do the work, then everything would be great. I did remember, or I, I did learn that lesson when I did quit my job to go into network marketing I thought if I just did this all the time, I could have all the money that all these people on the stage have, right? Yeah. Which a lot of them didn't. Right. But, but then I realized when I did that, I go, all right, so when I was part-time, 
I was making zero dollars. And I was making zero dollars in about 10 hours a week part time. Mm -hmm. Now, I was a math teacher, so this is embarrassing for me to say this. I didn't run the numbers and go zero dollars in 10 hours times five if I work 50 hours a week. Mm -hmm. uh, zero times five, Sean, is still zero. Still zero. So the amount of time that I was going to jump all in actually doesn't matter because I hadn't created something successful first. So in business, I know you're shaking your head with anger and irritation and little pestivity here. <laughs> pestivity? Uh, yeah. That word. Hang on a minute and I'll throw it over to you and you can <laughs> unleash yourself. Um, what happens a lot in the, in the business industry, coaching being being a, a business industry in terms of coaching being the product is that we focus a lot on scaling something, right? And that word might not be used a lot, but when you talk about doing group programs and making a bunch of money per weekend and all that stuff, that's a scaling mechanism, but you can't scale something that isn't successful. So what a lot of people are doing is trying to find their success in the scaling. And that's a problem. And that's one of the reasons why so many people create so much pressure on themselves because they're actually trying to succeed by scaling. You have to scale what you're successful at. What that means is stay part-time. Unless you have a bunch of money in the bank mm -hmm. and you've got all this runway and you have the internal pressure capacity to deal with unplugging all of your stability, financial stability, consistency, knowing what to do, if you have what it takes to unplug all of that, jump off the cliff and build your parachute on the way down, right. then do it. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody does. Mm -hmm. so is that possible? Yes. But it's not the right thing for almost everybody. But, but there's not a whole lot of people in the coaching industry talking about the fact that it's okay to build your coaching business Part time because we're so involved in the sexy, like, let's make all this money and everybody, like, you know, it, it's such an ego magnet, you know, when, when an industry doesn't have any regulations and they can't, there's nobody saying, okay, you can't promise this stuff to the people. So then the people want the sexy stuff. And then it's just like, let's just jump off the cliff. And if I just, you know, I should be able to do what everybody else is doing. And I see all these testimonials and people are going, because I followed this system, I made $50,000 and all that stuff. And, and I, don't, I don't necessarily think that a lot of those testimonials are flat out lies. Some of them are, but not all of them are flat out lies, but they're just a small, tiny percentage. And so the problem becomes when the tiny percentage becomes the expectation. That's the problem. And so a lot of people don't value being a part-time coach. They don't value getting good. They don't value the, the process of commanding the high tickets. Mm -hmm. Instead, they demand the high tickets before they command the high tickets. Mm -hmm. And then all of that pressure on top of all the instability that we're talking about crushes people. So it's really, really critical that we change the narrative because most people are going to do this part-time. Yeah. Most of you need to do this business part-time. Why? Because you're a brand new giraffe, just been born. You can't walk yet. You ever watch a little giraffe or some of those animals that have just, just been born, like they're all shaky, sure. you can't walk yet. Right. You're in survival phase mm -hmm. and trying to go full time in survival phase is the wrong thing to do. Yeah. So build your muscles, build your capacity. And some people go, well, I, if I keep my job, I'll have a few hours to work. Awesome. Then get efficient in those few hours, get better in those few hours and get to the point where you can't afford to keep working anymore then make the shift. Yes. And that is possible. And here's the crazy thing that I want all of you to get. If you do it that way, most of you will get full-time faster yep. 
but you'll actually do it based on foundation and you can grow your business and then have what's available to you, but you're not going to do it with the microwave pressurized ego driven. I'm going to go full time. And there's this stigma around part time, right? The full time is celebrated so much that becomes the expectation. And then a lot of people don't even want to admit that they still have a job. They're ashamed. I want you, I want all of you to be proud of saying, I still have a job and I'm building my business part-time. You know what that tells me? You're smart. Yep. And I'm not saying that anybody that, that left your job, you're dumb. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying from my vantage point, being in this industry for so long, it's wisdom to stay on your job and then build up your part-time business until you have to shift because you just simply can't afford to stay on your job anymore. But that's because you're making money as a coach. And what I found is that when people are still in their jobs, then you can charge 20 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. And it doesn't feel like you've got to suck all the money out of people's wallets to make up for all the money that you don't have coming in. If you get rid of your financial stability, yeah, you got to charge high tickets. Because now you've got to make up for all the money that's no longer coming in. And now your business is, is sending money out. That's what businesses do. Businesses have expenses. Your business is sending money out. So now you've got to make up for all of that. It's like overcompensating for the lack of foundation that you have in your business. And there's that, that's why there's so much more of a drive now. Because then we get anxious and we get hungry and we get... And we, it's like we, there's a word that I'm looking for, but it's like, we're trying to fill our void with mm -hmm. the high ticket prices. And now we create a cycle of desperation. Yeah. But what if you just built this on the side and you just made 40 bucks an hour extra, mm -hmm. or you made, you know, a, an extra, a few hundred dollars a month. And, and eventually that could become a few thousand dollars a month. What would a few thousand dollars a month mean to most people if they had a side business, there's something about the coaching industry. Now, if people are doing like something on the side, like they're like they're making quilts or they're doing like a like like a, a framing business or something like that, you know, woodworking, they're doing something on the side or they're being a notary or something like that. Like that actually feels good to so many people. There's not this expectation that you should be able to just charge five thousand dollars because somebody else does, and, and because you're in the coaching industry. So there's something about the coaching industry that has you know, almost demonized part-time. Anyway, over to you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's what came to me earlier is I was like, man, there's just this very real part of a lot of us, and you might not relate to this, but there's a very real part of a lot of us who just want that, like want that story, right? We want the rags to riches story. We wanna be the the star in that movie. And, and the reality is, is that the 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 exception becomes our expectation and that's where we get in that's where we get in so much where we get in so much trouble and and when i recognized just the and it, some of it might be deliberate and some of it i think probably the majority of it is not it's just unconscious like shaming right like you're less than if you're over here and those of us that are over here in this place we're in this elite club and you know there are as as you know Sean and you've said a lot of a lot of times there's a lot of certified coaches who are full time and have zero clients so it's this it's the recognition of of what's more important and and i i was in that place in my direct sales business where I did the, I'm gonna go full time because that's that's the thing to do and that's what looks good and that's what presents well. And it was, it was, it was devastating. It was destructive. Um, and when I came into my coaching business, I was committed to not doing that here. You know, Sean, you talked about the the wisdom of keeping your job, especially if you don't have the the internal and external systems to support the the risk of going full time. And if you do, that's great. There's no shame in that either. It's just understanding what's going to be the best choice for you. But what I recognized for myself is that it was care for my business. It was that I didn't want to put that pressure on my business to be everything 
for me. I wanted to really get the experience of, you know, charging for me. I started at 25 bucks an hour, just 25 bucks. And I wanted to get the experience of hearing the yes and hearing the no. And I wanted to get the experience of offering coaching packages and get the experience of coaching and then allow my schedule and my time, like availability to as you said, command the raising of the prices versus going about it the other way, where I'm putting the pressure on the other people and the pressure on my business to be able to um, make me feel good and feel like I'm winning. You know, it, it's there. One of the things that I think is so important for, for us to recognize is this particular journey is a journey. There's not a, a race. It's not like if you just got certified, you like you could be making a lot of money. And also like you're just at the beginning, the very little beginning of your journey. So give yourself the space and the time to be able to build a business that is sustainable so that you're building the success, like you said, Sean, the certainty, like we've talked about in all of these other video trainings, so that we can then eventually, should we want to scale? And you talked about a couple thousand dollars a month, which I think is amazing. And also my question to you is what would a hundred bucks a month in your household right now, what would that pay for? A hundred dollars. What would that pay for? What would that, what stress would that alleviate? Would that put gas in your car? Would that get, take your kid to, to some kind of lesson or buy them the cleats that they need for, for you know, the, the sport that they're involved in? Like, what would just a hundred bucks? We go so far so big, which is fine. It's awesome. It's possible. But let's be really realistic and take some of the pressure off because I'm telling you, starting at $25 an hour, my prices are dramatically different than that now from 2016 to here and it's been done sustainably and that's what i want for that's what i want for coaches yeah and if you think about you know we talk a lot about the distinction between the employee mindset and the entrepreneurial mindset mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of really good elements of the employee mindset. One of them is we don't expect craziness. <laughs> like nobody would get on their job and go, okay, I'm going to start working. But in three months from now, I should be getting a thousand percent more than what I am now. Right. So you get on a job and six months later, you might get an increase of 10% or 20%. And that's exciting right. to us. And we might we, we have long-term vision, you know, in my career, it's going to be several years down the line and I can, I can increase my value. And so we don't put those expectations on ourselves, partly because we know the process, but then we jump over here. And to your point, like immediately I should go from certification to $450 an hour. Right. Why? Cause just cause somebody else is doing that. Right. So I'm glad you, you shared the numbers and in a, in a very short period of time, comparatively, You've gone, you have jumped f like yes. thousands of percentage. Yes, sir. But in, in a small period of time, mm -hmm. comparatively, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's so critical for us to understand. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, about the acting world because my son really wants to be an actor. And so I was talking about, you know, the mindset. And he said, you, you get, make sure that your son has some kind of a gig you know, that's why so many actors are waiters and bartenders and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, 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 I get it, you know, so he can have the time and all that. And he goes, no, it's not, it's not that. It's not just about the time. It's, to, and you use a, a really important word, it's so that he feels like he's winning because it's really, really difficult to go on audition after audition after audition. And most of the time, you're not going to get the gig. Right. He said, emotionally, that is what ruins a lot of actors. Yeah. And then they put too much pressure on the next audition because the next audition needs to make up for all of the failures before. And he just explained it in a certain way that I thought was so profound. And I hadn't thought about it that way, that it's, it's the stability of winning. I go onto a job and I know that I'm going to get paid 
for that job. And then I can take the risk of going on auditions. Right. And you know what? I don't know that a coaching consultation call is much different than an audition, right? I mean, it really is. I'm going to give you an experience. And if it's a good fit, then you're going to say yes. And there's going to be money that's transferred afterwards. But if we're putting too much pressure on that, and especially if we need the high ticket and, and these people need to pay our bills, that kind of pressure is going to ruin almost everybody. So we want you to be in this business properly in your mindset and your focus and your commitment so that you actually have a better chance to succeed. And I love the fact that you said, basically, this is shaming. It is shaming. Some of it is unconscious on our part where we just don't want to admit that we, that we have to have a job because we feel like that's a failure. If we were better, if we were good enough, if we could just follow all those recipes out there, then we wouldn't have to have a job like a loser. So right. some of it is our fault, but a lot of it is triggered by the marketing, triggered by some of the testimonials, triggered by the story that's being told. So it's not our fault entirely, but we have to change the narrative. And obviously you in the position that you are now, you would go back and do it all the same if knowing that you're going to build foundation. And as we looked at the people that have come through our programs or the people in the industry that we've talked to that have succeeded, the majority of them succeed part-time first and then they start to scale. That's right. So let's bring Lizandra in and and Coach Laz. I know you've been in the background here listening to all this stuff. Nodding her head, rolling her eyes, yeah. rubbing yeah. her face. <laughs> all of that good stuff. So Lizandra, you've been listening to all this stuff in the background. Um, what do you want to say? <laughs> you can share whatever you want. You can change the discussion if you want to share anything else. But uh, we want to hear from your wisdom. Mm. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So, I, at first, I want to just take you back to how I started in coaching, but this conversation is perfect because I was thinking about this morning and I'm like, well, my journey, it doesn't look like a, a, a maybe what people might call a successful life coach or, you know, a coach. I, I, I used it differently, but I'm going to go back to 2015 where I didn't even know what a life coach was or coaching was. Like, Sean, if you remember, I was at a conference and I think I had a VIP ticket and there was a bunch of people talking and you talked about this program and light bulbs went off in my body. My whole body lit up because I had been searching for something. And then I'm like, that's it. Because I, had, you know, I know about coaching for, you know, athletics, but right. coaching someone through life and I like have this in um what is it this kind of natural abilities people talk to me and tell me their stuff and thought I was a weirdo because I'm like why do people come tell me things and so I thought mm -hmm. I'll go to this I will get some techniques and I'm going to be ready to go and I'm going to help people because I'll use my natural abilities plus technique and so I went in there not knowing what to expect and my whole freaking life changed and it blew me away. One of the most um, surprising things was connecting with people mm. that I never knew, strangers. And I'm very reserved. I'm, I'm out there. I'm kind of a little bit loud and friendly, but I'm reserved. There's a part of me that I do all that to an extent and you'll never get inside. And I've never had my heart yeah. outside of my body with other people other than my children, right? When your children are born or whatever, oh my God, this is, you feel like this is your heart outside your body. I never experienced something like that. And I haven't since then experienced mm. that kind of deep, deep, deep connection with human beings of mm. every gender, race, ethnicity, nationality, like the whole thing. Like I was very like, oh, I don't, I don't talk about this stuff. Yeah. And so I just have to say that my life changed from hmm. being a part of ECCP. Um, and then I went on to, you know, do some coaching inside of that brand that I was working in. Um, you know, so I did all the hours and all that. And I was sharing with Michelle, I don't even know if BCC, there was BCC then, because we you were talking about, back then. No. I don't think there was a BCC, hmm. but BCC right. was incorporated. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like it didn't get taught, because I literally started looking at old things. I'm like, I have reflections from 2016, things that from calls and things that, mm. that I like, I'm like, this is amazing. 
So mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm just so excited to be back in the way that I'm re-entering this. But I went on to really use it inside of my work. Like I never um, became a life coach or had a coaching business. Yeah. I was told, and it was somebody that you know very well, you know, I went and I'm like, I'm going to build my business. And I'm sitting there and they're like, well, do anybody know you? Like, how are you just going to just like, you need to make money. And I was never going to quit my job. Sorry, I was making really yeah. good money. So I'm like, yeah. I'm not quitting my job for this. Are you crazy? I have to, I'm responsible. I have children. I have bills. I can't quit my job, especially like I didn't know that bridge to be established. Yeah. We started talking about what do you do very well? And so I actually started consulting. And so Mm -hmm. this whole time I was building on the side of consulting business, Mm. but being a coach inside of the consulting business. So kind of tricking the people, (laughs) like you're going to get some coaching inside of this consulting. Yeah. I always tell people, you know, you can't, you bring your whole self to whatever you do. I don't care what you're doing. You bring your whole self. You can't check your emotions and things at the door is really difficult to do. It comes out in how you talk to people and deal with people. So I've always incorporate that. I incorporate it with my team and especially the language police. I forgot that. And I was listening to something like, yep. And really like hearing what people aren't saying. Mm, yes. And that that is so key. It's like, I hear what people aren't saying. And the language police with the can't and the shouldn't. And I even do it myself. I became more aware of words and how we use words and the power of words. Yeah. It's like should. And I remember, Sean, and I don't remember what it's called, but I remember on a call or something, you talked about you were the same way. You don't like people telling you should and can't. And it's like, shut right. you down. And I was like, <laughs> that's me. And then I went on to tell the person that I was dating at the time, that that's who I was. And that individual started to change how he said things to me. And I'm like, you can get me to do almost anything, but if you tell me what I should and need to do, I'm not going to do it. But if you say, you know, I was thinking about this, or have you thought about this? And maybe we should try this. Oh, sure, sweetie. Yeah. I don't hear anything else. I'm done. Yeah. Shut completely down. And mm-hmm. I didn't know that about myself. So I learned so much about myself. But how I, you know, use it to use coaching techniques. You know, I read something that I wrote and I said, I want this to be in my DNA. Mm. And it is. Oh. Like, you know, I'm going back to BCC and I'm listening to the meta programs. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember all those big names in the mm-hmm. thing, but I have incorporated so much. It is a part of my DNA and I didn't realize it until I started to review things and I'm reviewing going, Oh, I do that. Oh, that's me. Like that's where it is a part of my DNA. And now mm. that I'm retired, hey, yes. uh, as of October of last year from being a public servant for over 20 years, now I am, and I'm doing a lot of consulting work and I'm working with the population I want to work with. These are executive, um, like nonprofit leaders and executive, and that's who I really want to work with. So I'm able to incorporate this, even though it's more business coaching and I'm doing consulting. Mm-hmm. I always start with, and I tell them, this is how I do my work. We mm-hmm. will start with this. We're going to do a check-in with you. We're going to work on that. Like last week, that's what we, one of my clients, that's what we worked on. She didn't realize it because she came in with, they need to value what I do and I need to change their values you can't change someone's values. <laughs> I said, you, you can have values for the business. Mm-hmm. So we kind of work through that. And so I incorporated, and now I'm going back through ECCP. I'm so excited to be yes. here. And, and to really like build, because I was told, you know, you need to establish yourself. And I know that I'm very, I'm established now, especially in that world to yeah. go back and they see how I work. Even the pre- everything I do, even presentations, I do presentations different. Everything is different. So mm-hmm. that's how I've been able. So I don't know if I've, I haven't made a dime saying I'm a life coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it, I incorporate it in so much of what I do. It is, I believe now, part of my DNA. And this is how mm-hmm. I it. Yeah. Ah, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so good. You know, you, you mentioned earlier about 
just changing your life. You know, and like you just said, I mean, it, it, it has become a part of your DNA. Right. And like, what if, what if people made that the main point early on in the, in, in the process? So for the first six months, for the first year, for the first three years, whatever that journey looks like to you. And of course there are details that are going to vary with different people, but what if the first part of this journey equals you just changing your life without making crazy fundamental changes, especially if you're quitting your job, but it was just you fundamentally changing your life and your relationship shifted, maybe just by simply making somebody aware of something or you changing the way that you're talking. And then maybe your relationship with yourself changed and maybe your uh, just freedom in life shifted. Mm -hmm. Maybe you incorporated it into the things you're already doing. You elevated your competency in the stuff that you already are walking in. And then maybe as you start sharing some of this stuff, people start paying you. We've heard from a couple people just recently in the last, I think the last month, two of our students have shared that in in one of their early consultation calls, these people are not like well-established as life coaches either, but in, in some of their early consultation calls, they're just serving, you know, they're just helping people and practicing and learning and asking questions and being curious. And they actually asked the other person, one of them asked the other person, how much, like, what would it be worth for you to, you know, to, to do this, this work for a few months? And they go, $5,000, can I pay you now? Mm. And then the other person just said it was $5,000, the other coach, and, and they're like, of course, five grand. Yeah, of course. So my point is, there is a lot of money that can be made. Mm -hmm. And it will be made for most of you when you're in the game the right way. When you've removed the pressure. When early on in your business, life coaching is the icing on the cake that's already your life. Your life is already established. Your job is already established. There is no shame in continuing what you're doing and then incorporating, learning how to be a coach and have that better your life for a little bit. And then on the side, help other people and they will pay you. To Michelle's point, what if it's just a few hundred bucks? What if it's some kind of barter agreement? where you get somebody to build your website for you coaching them for a few hours, right? Yeah. There are ways to build this up foundationally. Mm -hmm. Our mentality ruins that for so much, so many people, so much of the industry. And it is built on shame. So much of it is built on shame. There's either shame in the messaging or there's just shame in the human that is tapped into by the messaging. And please don't build your business via shame. Please don't. And a lot of it is like people are carrying around shame for all the mistakes, you know, the, the programs that they paid for in the past and they shouldn't have done it or they should have known better or whatever. Don't carry that into your business. Build your business with service, with, with clean energy to help people. When you build a business with shame, if shame is in the cement, it's going to be on every floor yeah. of the building that you build. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your clients. Don't do that to your business. Don't try to make your business make up for anything in your past. And you absolutely can create the life that you want. Even in some of the fantasy marketing, you can create the life that you want, but do it foundationally. Change your life first before you try to get high ticket prices out of people to, you know, to try to fund your new business. It's just, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. I went full-time. I was already full-time as I, as I told you guys, but when I went, when I got into the business of coaching and speaking, I went full-time for about eight months without making anything, but like full-time without like full-time for eight months, you guys, I'm talking about putting in 60, 70, 80 hours a week without making much of anything because I was learning. I was doing all kinds of stuff. And then when it, and then when it popped, it popped and it exploded. And many of you have heard my story. I made over $300,000 in the next 18 months. Mm. 
but most people didn't put in the eight months of foundation full time that I put in. And so they think, well, I've been wanting to be a coach for eight months. That's the same, right? Same, same. So I should be able to make the $300,000 in the next 18 months. No, that's not how it works. There are muscles that need to be built. And there's a, there's capacity that needs to be built. There are skills. There's all kinds of stuff that need to be built. And we need to normalize that conversation so that you guys don't feel shame in holding on to a job while building a coaching business part-time. I promise you with every ounce, every goosebump that's popping on my body right now, I promise you with every ounce of my being, I'm positive, obviously, Michelle believes this, Lysandra believes this, that is the way to go for 99% of you. But the majority of people that I've seen that are struggling are putting all the pressure on themselves, thinking that they're messing up, thinking that they're going slow, thinking that they're being a loser because they still have a job. And what that does is it causes them to not be as effective or efficient in their part-time because they're doing the part-time with shame or they're doing the part-time with too much pressure. So even if you're just doing it part-time, but you're not in your part-time the right way, Mm -hmm. and you still can't build the muscles. So, so much of this is about the energy with which you are in your business, long-term vision, understand the process, and then it's possible for everybody. Like this makes me want to cry. It's possible for every single person to learn how to change human lives. That is possible, but not the way almost everybody is going about it. You don't have to be this extroverted, super successful salesperson. Like you don't need to close 90% of the people. You don't need to learn how to turn every no into a yes. You don't need to become this marketing genius. You don't need to hire these agencies. You don't, you don't even need to have a website. Michelle still doesn't even have a website. I mean, oh, technically, <laughs> technically she has a website, but it's not like a marketing website that's drawing a bunch of people in and, mm-hmm. and selling a bunch of programs and grabbing a bunch of email addresses and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't need that stuff. Mm-hmm. What you need is to be a really good coach that can help people change their lives and they will pay for that. If you are not in the business of becoming a really good coach that can help people change their lives, you won't succeed. Mike dropped. <laughs> Brought to you by Starbucks double shot. <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> Here's what I hear. I mean, and I love so much of this conversation and there's a couple things I want to say. One, Lazandra, I, I love when you said that you bring your whole self to whatever you do, right? Wherever you go. So if you're in the business inside the possibility of changing people's lives, start with yours. Start at home, start at home, your home, your body. And, and when you do that, right? Then, then it becomes, like you said, so beautifully and powerfully a part of your DNA. And, and I, I believe I understood what you were uh, hey. saying, right? What you were saying, Lysandra, in, in the statement, like, I never got technically paid for technically the life coaching. And I know enough about your story to know that there were promotions. There were transformations that happened. There was retirement. There were things inside of your family relationships that have completely brought abundance, like bigger than financial abundance into your life because of what, because of what you said, like it's part of your DNA. So I loved hearing you bring that up because not everybody who comes to, you know, uh, our breakthrough coaching certification program or our elite coaching certification program wants to like build a full-time coaching business or a consulting business. Some people do want to be more impactful in their leadership, in their, their job or in their direct sales business, or they want to be, a, 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 a different, like they want to parent their children differently or want to transform their, their relationships or they want to, um, they do want to be able to transform others. And all of that is the result of the DNA internal work that, that, that we do. And, and the other thing that I want to just name is that if you have, if you recognize that you have built your business around shame, you are not alone and it is not too late to rebuild with a clean foundation. It is not too late. At any point in time, you can recognize, oh my gosh, that's what I've been doing. 
and I don't want to do that anymore. And, and I promise you all the skills, all the things that you've learned, that that stuff, that's not going anywhere. That's going to be there. When you get this foundation solid and all of that comes together, that's when you can start to be in that place where you're taking the action to hit that clicking point so that you can have the results, the tangible results that you're looking for and actually feel good in the process. Because I'm telling you, I have tried to build a business, not a coaching one, but I have tried to build a business being stressed out and strung out and, and hating every second of it and talking to people and recruiting conversations, being like completely fried, being like, it's so, it's so great. I'm miserable. Don't you want to do this too? And if you're coming into your coaching business with that same kind of energy of like, I'm stressed out, I'm miserable, I'm broke, I'm under all of this pressure. Don't you want me to help you experience more happiness in your life? Whether you're saying that Sorry, literally or you're not talking to you, um, whether you're saying that literally or energetically, it is being felt. And that's when we can get this in our DNA, like Lysandra so beautifully shared, then that's when energetically everything changes with our relationship with the people that we're speaking to. Yeah. Ah, so kind good. Of pandemic, right? We want to spread that. That's what we want to spread. It's a different kind of pandemic. There you go. <laughs> like, yeah. Everyone to catch this. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, we want you to get infected with this. This is this is important. It does change mm. everything. And I didn't realize so much. And I'm like, this, I live this. I was put on this earth to serve and to change people's lives. And the funding, the, the abundance comes in different ways. It comes. It matches. The energy gets matched. I don't do it for that. And that's why it's become a part of my DNA. And people, you're right. They just want to pay you. Like, can I, can you, just, can, can I meet with you? Can I talk to you? And it's like, well, and you don't worry about, do I have a coaching program together or whatever? It's, you know, that was a lot of pressure. So yeah. this is an important conversation. I'm so glad you're having it because I needed, I had this kind of conversation that released me from my shame of having a job. Like, yeah. what would there be shame in having a job? I worked in workforce development. That's what I did for a living. There's no shame in working, no job. I don't care what you're making. There's no yep. shame in working and, and being responsible. But Amen. I was feeling that. And it was literally someone like yourself saying that, released it like that. And I'm like, oh, I could do something different. So this is, a, mm. I'll, I will be there on, for that conversation too. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad. I'm, I'm so I glad. You, you, well, I love you so much. We we both we love who you are and what you provide to the to the community. I'm glad you mentioned the pandemic. Uh, and you know, the, <laughs> the world needs a different kind of virus uh, to infect us. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. You know, the pandemic has thrown a lot of people into financial instability. Mm -hmm. And whether people still have their jobs, I know a lot of people were displaced, but there's a feeling in society that people don't really know what they actually are stable inside of anymore. Not just with financial roles, but all the roles. And so that is a really important ingredient for us to recognize. Mm -hmm. And specifically with money, a lot of people feel a lot more unstable financially, whether it's you know, whether they're going to be, be able to keep their job or what their money is doing in the stock market or the future of the country or the world or whatever, there's a lot more financial instability, I think, than there used to be for a lot of people. And coaching can fill that void of financial instability so that you can get back on solid ground, feel good about yourself, change your life in the process, change your relationships in the process, get all of that going in a positive foundational way. And then you can take it to another level if you want to. And that's possible for every single person. That's what's exciting for yes. us is that it's possible for every single person, but it is possible. Like that's the thing. The final thing I wanted to ask each of you, and Michelle, when you started, when you first jumped, when you first walked into ECCP and you paid five thousand dollars, Lizandra also paid five thousand. Yep. You guys both paid the high, high prices, and then ten thousand on top of that for yep. the for the extended uh, the extended program. Right. Um, when you guys first got into ECCP. Did you believe that you would one day have that, like what you saw? I mean, you just like, you laughed before I even finished the question. Like, did you believe that, oh, I can do that. Like I can, I can totally change somebody's life. You saw a bunch of demos and 
you know, you were in this environment? I would imagine the answer for both of you is no, right? Like I didn't even know I wanted to be a coach. Right. So when you first got into it, you couldn't see yourself the way that you are today. Would you guys both agree with that? I agree. Totally. hundred percent. I agree. Me too. When I got into it and I saw Jack Canfield in the, in the stuff that he was doing, I thought there's no way I could ever do that. Mm -hmm. So the reason I wanted to ask the two of you is, is for any of you out there that feels the shame that, that we both been taught that we've all been talking about that you just lit up a little bit, Michelle, the sh if you feel shame, if you feel like you've been doing this for a long, long time and you just don't have the confidence and the certainty, it's not that you can't do this. It's that you haven't found the aligned recipe yet, or you're just, you haven't given yourself enough time on the runway. You haven't given yourself enough time to evolve. And it's probably because of pressure or just for whatever reason, you just haven't allowed yourself to continue moving. Right. But every single person, if you don't feel that level of confidence, if you can't see yourself talking with the kind of certainty that Michelle does, talking with the certainty that, that Lysandra does, that many of you are meeting for the first time, talking with the certainty that I have now, if you can't see yourself do, doing that, it's simply because you haven't evolved on this journey yet. It doesn't mean you can't. I just don't want that lack of belief to stop you. That's not a warning sign. Like, oh, well, you can't do this because you can't envision your life having it in your DNA. Neither could I, any of us. None of us could until we did. But we only did after going through the process enough to go, oh my goodness, I think I could actually help some people. And then we just got it in motion. And then we studied more and practiced more. And pretty soon the certainty does get into your DNA. I just want to make that that clear for all of you because a lot of people can't see themselves succeeding and that's one of the reasons why they don't commit to the path. The nature of success in an evolutionary path where you're going to evolve means you literally cannot see yourself on the next level because it's an evolutionary level. You cannot see yourself. It's like you sitting in, you know, wherever you are right now and looking up at the ceiling and go, I can't, I can't see myself on the floor of this ceiling on the next level. Yeah. Cause there's a ceiling here. You literally cannot see yourself there if we're talking about evolution. So if that is where any of you are, our invitation is use that as fuel to just keep going. We just need you to know that it's possible. Don't put the pressure on yourselves get in the game the right way, mm. keep going, find a program that is aligned for who you are and what you want is absolutely possible if you stay in it. And that's the way we've built all of our certification programs that help humans understand humans and then give them coaching techniques if they wanna build a coaching business or they just wanna help other people with all of that. But it's gonna be a personal life change first. I hope that threat was captured on camera. Uh, it just said right before was, you're in trouble today. I just want to be very clear with everybody. And today's media or, or video is brought to you by Starbucks Double Shot Energy. I've never had one of these, so I've tried one today. The you're in trouble today was like me talking to me out loud. I'm just going to do the whole thing jogging. Our numbers dropped. I wonder oh, if right, that, <laughs> they did. They just they just went like cut directly in half. That's gonna say that it's that it was the product placement, and everybody's like Starbucks. No, we're not gonna go to Starbucks. So had I jogged first, then the numbers would have gone up. That's that's what I'm gonna say. Now, if you like this video, check out that video right there, which is part one of a series breaking down the 14 ingredients and the two main concepts to be an extraordinary coach. It's primarily concerned with avoiding rejection and avoiding failure, which means all the fears are up there. All the danger is up there. All the, the panic and the anxiety, all of that stuff is up here in the